It was the summer of 83. It's hard to explain the atmosphere, but it seemed almost magical. MTV actually played music. Wrestling was real, though we did start having our doubts. I think this is fake. You think it's fake? What's that? Is that fake? Huh? Atari was getting pretty popular, but kids still played outside every day. There was no bicycle helmets and knee pads with overly sensitive parents. Just a sense of adventure, good times, good friends, and something new every day. I was around nine years old. I don't remember the exact day, but it was June or July and it was hot. The kind of humid hot you only get in the deep south. I lived in an apartment complex called Hidden Oaks in Albany, Georgia. I even remember the apartment number, 123. Not sure why I can't remember to buy milk, but some little things just stick with us. I was on my bike feeling pretty proud of myself. I had recently gotten off training wheels. Yeah, I know I was a little late, but we were poor and it was a while before I ever got a bike. It was getting late and the sun started to set. So I left my friend's place and stopped by the military ditch along the way. It was across the parking lot of an apartment just past a small section of woods. It was a man-made ditch that was cemented and went into an angle at 45 degrees down. I'd say it was about two to three stories deep. It was only about four feet across at the bottom and went into a 45 degree angle back up. Imagine a large V shape, but with a flat point at the bottom. Once you got past the trees, it got much quieter, even cooler. The large trees would block out the sunlight, and you could hear the small trickle of water running below at the bottom of the basin. After staring into it a bit, getting thoroughly creeped out, I head back home with my playing cards and my spokes echoing off the side of the apartment. Now this may seem weird, but hear me out. Also, it's relevant to the story, so, yeah. Here I was, a nine-year-old boy, and for whatever reason, I had started getting into drawing hearts. Now I know what you're thinking, but what I was drawing was not exactly innocent. I would draw the outline of a heart, and then proceed to draw weird, gothic-like designs on the inside. Maybe I was a weird kid. Who knows? I was in my room board and I wanted to draw one of those hearts with some markers I had. I think I looked around for paper or something, I, I can't recall, but I looked over and on my dresser I had some stuffed toys. One in particular stood out because the bottom of his feet were white and flat. It was an old vintage bunny that had a very real look and not so real at the same time. One thing that struck me was it had red eyes. It was not like the cutesy, large-eyed, bushy toys of today. I have attached a picture to get the closest idea of what it looked like. It was even old to me, and looking back, I think it must have been passed down. I just had always had it. I grabbed it, and I sat on the floor with my markers in hand, and just kind of stared into its eyes a bit. I don't think I was scared or anything, I mean, it was just a toy. So I drew my initials on its foot, CR, and quickly realized there was no way I could do detail with a heart. The bottom of its foot was velvety, so it was just impossible to do anything with it. So I drew a black outline and filled the rest in with red. I looked at my handiwork and I was pretty happy. So I played with it for the first time, well since ever. It got late, so I went to bed, and I had it laying on my pillow next to me. The morning came, and I woke, and I looked over to see my handiwork on the bunny again. Well, it wasn't there, so I assumed it must have fell off the bed. 
I looked over and nothing. I was so confused as to where it could be. I was so sure I had in bed with me last night. I looked around the rest of the apartment, except where my parents were sleeping, and well, it was just gone. A few hours passed by, and I had kind of forgotten about it, and I went outside. This is where it's going to get kind of hard to explain and, and weird. Oftentimes in movies, you will hear people say they felt pulled to something. Well, for me, I felt I was supposed to do something. Like in my mind, I'm the one who made the conscious decision, the choice to do what I did next. I didn't go my usual route. This time I started heading straight to the marine ditch. The atmosphere was anything but exciting. It was dull and everything was unusually quiet. The clacking of the cars seemed to be reverberating back more loudly because there was just no other sounds. I was getting closer to the woods leading out to the ditch. Even though I had made the decision, I felt a sense of dread as I got closer. The shading seemed darker, more ominous the closer I got. I started to ask myself, why am I doing this? Or maybe that's what I thought I thought as I got older. But what I do know is I could not stop pedaling towards it. Honestly, this part is hard for me to write, but I go just beyond the woods and I still can't get over how silent it was to this day. I put my feet down and I walk up to the edge of the ditch while still seated on my bike. I look down in the ditch and at the bottom was a fog following along the trail of water. The fog was moving very slowly and it covered the entire base of the ditch at the bottom as far as I could see. I was mesmerized. I had never seen that and I guess it was because it was early and the dew and humidity was setting in. As I was staring up ahead I saw an opening in the fog, a hole for some reason where I could see just below it. I kept staring at the hole as it kept getting closer to me. It felt as if though it was alive, it never seemed to change shape as it moved. It stayed as it was the entire way, slowly getting closer, and I could not seem to pull away. Then it happened. Almost directly below me, as I'm looking through it, I see it. Those red eyes and it was dirty, sitting up against the bank, staring right at me. I froze with fear. Even in my young mind, I was rationalizing. This was not possible. I was trying to process this, and then I saw its feet, and there it was, my initials, CR, and the heart on the bottom of its foot. The spell was broken. Terror set in and it took all I had to move. Its head turned and followed me. Words could not describe that kind of terror. I took off home too scared to even cry. I never told anyone. I was a kid, but I was old enough to know no one would believe me. Heck, it's still hard for me to believe and it happened to me. I wish I could say it ended there, but life is never as you want it to be. Months went by. Fall was setting in. My friends wanted to play some baseball, and there was only one place to play. And you guessed it, near that ditch. I had avoided that place like the plague, as you can imagine. I couldn't say anything, of course, so go and my mind's not in the game at all. I could just feel its presence behind me. It wasn't long before somewhat of a friend of mine named David knocked it right into the parking lot. It hits the concrete, flies out behind those very trees. We were kids, and it was our only ball, of course, so he exclaims he will go get it. I tried to stop him. I'm sure I should fear my voice, but what could I say? I follow him, I guess somehow to keep him safe. I don't know. 
I just had to be sure. David is ahead of me. And, sure enough, that ball went down the ditch and landed exactly where that bunny used to be. As I'm about to tell him not to go, he's already sliding down to the bottom. Once below, I plead with him to come back, and of course he just looks at me confused. The ball is just on the other side. As he steps into the water to reach down to grab the ball, he suddenly stops. Time seems to stand still, and he just sits there frozen. It seemed like forever. I call his name, but he's just standing hunched over, reaching for the ball in an odd position, not even moving. He turns pale. I call his name again. David? Blood starts to pull up from the water, flowing down the stream, straight out of a horror movie. I'm sitting there, frozen, and I'm waiting. Finally, he starts to move. He lifts his foot up, and this massive shard of glass is clean through, glistening with blood. The blood, his look, and everything that had happened. I screamed at him, and I ran home as fast as I could. I don't even remember the run there. My parents saw me and was trying to figure out what was going on, but I was unable to even speak. Soon after, I heard the ambulance outside. I never saw him again after that. A few months had passed by and we moved. And everything that was once childlike and magical to me died after that. I do wonder at times what happened to him. But the memory of those eyes staring into me, I will never forget.